you know, I can't see into the future. I don't know what's going to happen. borrowing myself really in the creative process because I've had some bad news, I've had some really... Cut this up. We have some love. <laughs> yeah, don't you? Well, I won't see. Oh, don't talk about that. Mm. So, yeah. if you could have the, the shot, like to move anything around, or if you wanted to have, like, say, because my idea, of, like, being a bit dramatic, is to turn this and move that along, and then maybe we could have some kind of shelving on the thing. You know what I mean? It's like, is this? I mean, this is going. This needs to go, and then, this needs to go. yeah, that's going to make a world of difference. I think we need to focus here. Well, I think it's good in a way because obviously we can stack upwards. Well, I think I think being able to reach to the sky is great, but there's, there's stuff here, packaging here that just just doesn't get used. It's taking up space. I'd, I'd rather have like the post paperwork, the admin, like you know here or 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 you know whatever. St I'm thinking move this here, move the post here, and, and make more cardboard king shelves here for more stock. Okay, just showing what we've got going on. Mm. It's a pickle. <laughs> it could just be in the white Tucked cupboard. Away somewhere, yeah. Mm. Or lower down, you know, low mm -hmm. priority. Mm -hmm. Things that things that you access often ought to be here. I guess my question to you is like, you know, I, I don't see you use these things very often. So is it because you can't access it? Is it because it isn't things that you use often? Like, you know, what? Do we make space for what's in the basket here to go on there? Is that is that what would you like some art storage space? That's like you know. Mm. Okay. Not sure of the answer to that, are you? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to clear that. That's the plan, and then get rid of get rid of the extra stuff. James is going to chop that up, cut it up to size, and then we're going to do more of the cubbies up here because we've got more stock I think these are all just going to put out and all that can go in the bin can't it yeah I think so Good it's category. It'd be quite nice to get some of these envelopes out that are for the greetings cards because it seems I only have this many out at a time or so oh, okay. and it's a bit of a pain to get more out so having some envelopes accessible would be really good okay uh, getting rid of that yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to keep going, basically. Are we going to keep going? Yeah. A little bit more. Yeah. And then, but we're not going to film the whole process because there's, there's a lot of discussion in between, isn't there? Definitely. All well, the decisions that are boring. It, yeah. It's really boring to. Just good to see the results. <laughs> I think I chopped your head off then. Sorry. Probably. Saying good to see the results again. So it's just good to see the results. Okay. Sorry I chopped his head off. Oh, my Lord. So stationery here. Yeah. Stock is going here with new shelving. Kind of, kind of a new cubby here. Yeah. So we've got a packing table here. Still mid flow. We're let's, still, let's, oh, let's... we have done a bit on here as well, haven't we? What have we done on there? I'll we'll just put some more stock out. Right. So we're just filling up the pepper pots, as I call it. Yeah. Still got. It's in process. Yeah. But it's organised. But it's organised. It's categorised. Yes. What we got? What we got? Space for the cardboard king to do his magic. <laughs> We've uh, optimised. <laughs> <laughs> if only I'd left the camera on yeah. for the last hour. <laughs> I 
happily an hour. It's good. We yeah. haven't we haven't micromanaged everything because we just lost the will. We've dealt with a lot. We've dealt with a lot. All right. So packaging. Yeah. Stock. Stock. And a new stock is going to go here with the new cupboardy. We don't know if we're going to get time for that because James works away for the rest of the week and we've got shop orders and all sorts to do. So we might not get time for cardboard king. We should just tell them that now, shouldn't we? Our goal is to try. We're going to try. But anyway, that, if you can envision it. It's good. It's good effort. It may not look like we've done much, but we have. And we're hot and bothered, aren't we? Mm. We're very hot and bothered. Yes. We're doing good. I like it. Let's put the place back together. I think we need to have a look at your boxes and then that'll help. I can't do it. I can't do it. Okay, take one home. I can't. I'm not taking it home. I've got enough stuff to do. No, 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 no. My bed's my piece. Do you think it's easier to find stuff? Not right now. It looks moved. <laughs> Are you happy? Yeah. <laughs> So good morning, we're back, and I've made it in earlier than I thought I would. I've had really low energy of late, yeah, so I'm kind of struggling a little bit with my energy levels, but, you know, just managing with what we've got. I never know until I wake up in the morning, so you'd have to let me know if that's, you know, it rings true for you as well. I do find mornings are usually my power time, if I can get in a little bit early and then get started. I kind of want to carry on with, you know, tidying up the shop and decluttering, because there's, there's much more to do. As you probably saw, you know, yesterday, we weren't, you know, super fast, because it's it's the decisions, isn't it, that slows you down when you're tidying and organising and decluttering. And I think the decluttering has to take the priority, if you like. But anyway, a little break from that today. Suffice to say as well, with Etsy shops. So my shop is still on Etsy currently. James and I have a plan, we've talked about it for a long time, to move things over to, you know, my own website. I used to have my own website when I was Wendy Fairy Art, quite a long time ago now. There's a couple of reasons I haven't jumped at a website yet. I don't feel like I'm ready to sort of shift the shop over to my own website, in a way. I don't think that Etsy bring me traffic. I don't think Etsy works in in the best way for non-US people, if you like. It definitely prioritises users in the US, if you like, and obviously I'm in the UK, so it doesn't. And there's all the shipping complications and things like that as well with it. So I don't necessarily want to go with any big company. I just want to have it on my own website and, you know, whatever traffic I get towards that, towards the shop, will you know, we'll see if it's less or not. I think for a lot of creators out there, artists and creators out there right now that are using Etsy, I think there's a lot of dismay, if you like, because they take a lot of money off creators and they don't give a lot back in a sense. And yes, the usability and functionality and all that stuff is there and so it supports running a really successful shop in a way maybe one day i move everything over to my own website i don't know i think that would be quite nice to be independent from some of these bigger companies it'd be nice in a way to optimize internet searches and that kind of thing to for, for smaller creators so i think that's where maybe instagram and social media do come in part of the process of decluttering the shop is also you know doing the online bit of it as well so it's kind of like an overhaul of the shop I've really enjoyed making some new products. Got a few other things on the back burner, but today I am I'm going to pick a card in a minute. Today's card is the distraction of shiny things. So it's number 15 in my book. And let's see. I'm not going to read all of it because you know, it's quite long, but essential meanings are taking stock and leveraging your strengths, polishing and buffing your image the strength of discernment, knowing exactly what is right for you and what is not right for you at this time. Self-care message, 
illusion and delusion, being distracted by another person's shiny things and comparing yourself to others, veering from your course, coveting another person's success, imposter syndrome, being continuously tempted to jump to the next hot thing. It's easy to get distracted in life, isn't it? I'll read the rest of that later. But right now, I want to get on with the Patreon video for this week, which is my art journaling video. And I've been doing, let's see if I can show you my little sketch of a hair. I'm kind of going to do some little studies. So some, you know, journal fodder or journal treasure, as I call it. And uh, it's all to do with spirit animals this month and the cosmic hair. So I've uh, sketched out this little concept. I've actually written a what I'm calling a poetry tale. It's like a fairy tale and it's kind of rhymes and it's a little bit longer than my usual little poems. And I've been writing quite a lot of rhymes and poetry tales recently. This one is all to do with the cosmic hair and the fairy. So it's quite sweet and it's all about a rescue. So I'll share more about it, you know, as things unfold, but I want to do some hair art today yes and I don't mean this kind of hair I don't have a spirit animal in my spirit animal deck though which is the this one by Colette Baron Reed yeah I don't have one in there I have a rabbit so I'm gonna make my own stuff up about the hair I sometimes find it hard to jump about from tasks so from sort of Mondays doing some artwork and then Tuesday doing some decluttering and then Wednesday back into the artwork again. But if I come in early-ish, you know, jump straight into it, I can kind of get my head around it a bit better. But I have to work like this at the minute because I need to be flexible around James's working hours, if you like, because, you know, he's away in the week and then back at the weekend. So we've sort of fallen into a little routine as well of the things that we need to do together. You know, personal things and also work things because we collaborate a lot on my projects and stuff you know he helps me out loads in case he hadn't noticed part of us sorting out the shop it's like that's a third of, of what I do if you like I kind of split myself into into threes where I well in a way it's like the artwork and then the sales the shop if you like and so that's about a third of the space in the studio and then the other two thirds I've got kind of one third set up for art journaling and the other third set up you know for messy wet stuff so I have to compartmentalize myself a little bit if, if you like and it it doesn't come naturally no and maybe as fellow creatives watching this you might be able to relate really well to that the creative brain works in a very unique way doesn't it and we don't always have control of that I think you know what I mean <laughs> So I'm thinking it's time for a bit of a lunch break now and it's kind of an early lunch actually but because I'm up early today I'm yeah, getting really hungry so yeah I think I'm just gonna nip to the shop and then finish off my sheet and then I might go home because as I said I've been really struggling with my energy I don't usually draw animals and so it's not something that's in my comfort zone and as I say quite frequently on here you know it's nice to push yourself out of your comfort zone creatively and you learn new things you're not just sitting you know stagnant in what you know so it's nice to just branch out and you know dip your toe in now and again of things that make you feel a little bit nervous or a little bit uncomfortable but yeah we develop long ways definitely pushing that way but we also you know think about breadth as well so we go deeper into things and that can be a really interesting process and I think when you're drawing something over and over again sometimes even the same pose I, I find you can go deeper and deeper and deeper into learning about something and making discoveries that you know were really unexpected and you didn't even know were there and then that develops the artwork in a really surprising new direction if you like so it's all part of the creative process which I, I absolutely love as you know so anyway
just kind of putting the finishing touches to my um, spirit animals journaling sheet. And I just wanted to kind of, yeah, bury myself in the creative process today because I had some really bad news last night and we're okay, it's absolutely fine. It's kind of going back to a video I put up a couple of weeks ago now about the planning permission for a mobile phone mass. The planning has been approved so that's going to impact me because I suffer from quite a few health ailments to do with electrical and magnetic frequencies. Not everybody does and I appreciate that and also there's a very mixed bag of research out there and in a way some of the big organisations that make all the rules for the governments to implement certain structures and things throughout our our world if you like they're not up to date with all the current research i mean i'm not saying i am either i'm no expert but i did join a zoom meeting last night to kind of find out if i could appeal really because i don't really know anything about it and just saying it because it's something that's going on and i'm feeling really down about it and yeah kind of lost the will really because i put so much work into kind of you know, gathering as many objections as I could in a really short space of time. I guess on top of the fact that it, it affects me directly health-wise as well, I know I'm not the only one and there's two nursery schools, a primary school, a medical centre and old people's homes, so I'm just trying to be a good person. I'm just trying to be an advocate as well for Mother Nature and, you know, the biodiversity, the insects, the pollinators, the bees, Anyway, as you know, probably if you've been on here a while, you'll know that I've been thinking of moving house anyway. So that's certainly an option if it's just going to be like 100 metres from my current abode. I guess, of course, to say about that as well, the housing market is in such a disarray um, and prices are so enormous. So, yeah. Anyway, I went on this Zoom call last night to kind of speak to people that are fighting the good fight if you like and they're much more up to date than me on all the research and peer-reviewed studies and things like that from you know all over Europe and indeed over in the US as well and so I spoke to a lawyer last night and she suggested because I said can you appeal now I can't appeal so anybody in the neighborhood can't appeal but if I was the company who wanted to put the mast up and I lost my planning proposal I could appeal so only one side can appeal, which seems bonkers to me. The only option open to me, it seems, is to go to court, take them to court, take the council to court, the company to court, and that would cost me a, between £20,000 up to about £35,000. And, you know, I really don't have that kind of money, so that's not an option. It doesn't seem like a balanced situation if one side can appeal the council's decision but the other side can't but then it's all weighed you know against the little people isn't it always and is the agenda here the telecommunications company you know making a load of money and then you know conflict of interest perhaps with some of the um politicians and government reps on the council you know i don't know i could hazard a guess but i don't actually know so I think there are elements, aren't they, to um, being a creative. I'm not just talking about artists here, visual artists here. I'm talking about, you know, there's a connection between being an artist and kind of being a freedom fighter, if you like, an advocate, if you like, for the underdog or the person that's not heard. You know, Frida Kahlo comes to mind. She was very political, very much an advocate, very much part of, you know, political parties. And I do think sometimes on social media, some, some it's like I said before, some of these debates are shut down because you're seeing as this crazy person if you're going against the normal flow of things and you don't believe the given things I I've always been one to question I mean I used to drive my mum crazy with it actually <laughs> you know why this why this and and I think James was the same as well he always talks about when he was a little boy and he used to ask so many difficult questions but I think it's always good isn't it to question these things and you know I don't want to go into my health too much at the moment but you know there are things going on for me and I think I'm understanding that it's the 4G mask that's near me that has kind of exacerbated if not caused quite a lot of the symptoms that I'm experiencing at the moment and I definitely don't want that cranked up to the next level of mobile phone technology if you like. It hasn't been proven safe yet so why are we rushing ahead with it? Are there 
certain distances from residences and schools and that kind of thing where it's less of a danger or less of an impact on people that are sensitive to it you know can we check that first instead of jumping ahead with something that we haven't got all the information on first the world doesn't make any sense to me and i know quite a lot of you feel the same as well and whether or not you agree with me on the you know should the mobile phone must be in residential areas or not you know i had some lovely comments on the last video when I was talking about this I think it's not the last one I think it's the one before where people said I really don't feel like that about these mobile phone masks I actually disagree with you but I hear you and I think that there are other sides of the debate and it doesn't just have to be you know a polarized thing where you think that and I think that and we're like this there are like I said in that video you know the gray areas the crossover points where we can actually start communicating about these things and maybe one of the crossover questions as a way in is it less dangerous to have them further away from residential areas I don't know so I don't have all the answers and I'm not claiming to so don't leave me a comment down here that like oh you don't want technology and you don't want wi-fi and look what you do for a living most of the time I don't actually use wi-fi I'm always plugged in at home and on the occasions I do use it, I appreciate it, yes, but it is a convenience. It is a want, not a need. So there is always that. And even if we didn't have access to Wi-Fi, we could still keep going as human beings. You know, if it is a situation where it is dangerous for many human beings and the biodiversity and pollinating insects and the bird populations, etc., then we get rid of it in my opinion. This is my opinion because this is my YouTube channel and I'm allowed to express it on here. But if you don't agree with me, I'm completely open to that as well. So I'm not saying, you know, I just think that there's room for discussion and disagreement, talking things out, you know, to move us in a direction where, you know, everybody's happy and we've ticked the boxes of everything's checked off and safe and we've gone through the right channels for everything. And it's not just about the big corporations and it's not just about moving everything on because for the sake of moving things on and advancing technology, and it's not just for the sake of, you know, money, people making money. You know, and as a good comparison, and here's a whole other video about this, you know, the whole AI thing, how, how that has moved forward in the last three, four weeks with the release of ChatGPT4. Now, I don't know anything about this, I, you know, no expert by any means, but from the things I've heard from the experts that are talking about it, you know, it's moving so fast that you know, we can't keep up with like banking security, for example, and that's just one teeny tiny part of it. So can we, as a civilization, can we, as mankind, can we slow down, I think is what I'm saying. Can we come from a moral stance? And even though, like I said, I feel like I've lost the will and I'm kind of feeling pretty hopeless about it, I still hang on to hope. And I think hope is always there. We never know what's going to happen or what's around the corner. You know, I can't see into the future, so, I don't know what's going to happen but maybe this pushes me into you know moving somewhere else i don't know or maybe it pushes the technology because it starts a whole legal case i don't know i mean maybe i'm a bit naive but i just was really hoping they would reject this one because the same council in in my area has in the last year rejected another one on health grounds which set a precedent so I thought that that, because it was the same council, they would also reject basically all of them coming up now. Itchy you notes, know, sorry. Anyway, that's where things are at at the moment, so we'll have to wait and see, won't we?